good morning, Pastor Payne and Pastor Sheldon. Uh, it's good to join you both and all the 616 strong. And uh, this is wonderful. This is great. And uh, thank you for the privilege and the invitation to share with the greater Milwaukee um, Adventist uh, Fellowship of men and women of God. I'm excited too. I can just uh, hardly wait for those two minutes to go by. They seem like an eternity. But ready by God's amazing grace to be just uh, embraced and empowered by the Holy Spirit to share with God's people this morning. Thank you for your words of affirmation. It's wonderful to see good friends, uh, church family, that uh, the Lord has given us the privilege to journey together. And uh, we're good to start in 20 seconds. Great, great. It is 9 a.m. Good morning, Greater Milwaukee Adventist Fellowship. I was just looking at uh, your tick there, uh, the clock, or at least the counter, and it is 619 prayer warriors, strong, ready to be used by God to encourage um, one another, um, people that are committed to touch the lives of neighbors in their community and to be there to be a blessing to friends, to relatives, co-workers, wherever they might be. And this morning, I like to, I want to meditate with you about a place. Uh, this particular place, it's not spoken much about in the news. When you turn the news, a lot of news going on today. But this place is a very unique place. And of this place, Moses spoke of in Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 14. I'd like to invite you either with your Bible or your electronic Bible device to go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 14. And the Word of God tells us the following. Indeed, heaven and the highest heavens belong to the Lord your God, also the earth with all that is in it belong to God. Um, I can imagine when Moses saw it, when he saw it, when, we, when he experienced just watching in vision what the Lord had manifest, revealed to him. And I want to talk a little bit more of this place. And there's a reason for it. And we are all obviously aware of that reason. Because um, as it becomes more clear and more evident, then we will be just be so much uplifted and encouraged in the midst of the circumstances that we're in. So for that, join me now. Because prior to Moses, Jacob saw that place. And turn with me to Genesis chapter 28, and we will begin looking at verse 12. Genesis chapter 12, I'm sorry, chapter 28 and verse 12 reads in the following way. Then, this is um, Jacob, then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending 
and descending on it. Moses speaks of these heavens that belong to God, and not only the heavens, the earth as well, but also here Jacob sees the heavens, and then he sees this ladder, and he sees the angels ascending and descending on it. We know the journey that Jacob was in. This journey, he was running away from his brother Esau, and he was weary after a long day of journey. The night has set, and he's going to take time and prepare to have a night of sleep, but with many thoughts in his mind. We know what was going on in his mind and what he had done, what he had said to his father. And this was causing him not so much joy. He was concerned. He was worried. Could he be forgiven for what he had done? And God in his infinite love and compassion decides to tell him the plan of salvation in a vision and he uses the ladder. In this ladder, the base of it is here on earth, and angels of God were ascending and descending on this ladder. Verse 13, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I like that word there, that message. God was the top of it. Jesus himself was at the top of the ladder in heaven. Yes, and behold, the Lord stood, he was there, above it, and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land of which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. God is saying to him, dear Jacob, while you're running away, while you're trying to find peace of mind. I want you to know you will come back to this land. This land, I promised to Abraham, he lived in it. So did Isaac. So did um, those two ancestors of yours who saw it, who lived in it, and it's going to be yours. And I am more particularly um, focused on the part of the top of the ladder, what God stood and what Jacob saw there, we don't have those details, but God was there at the top of the ladder and he saw the angels going up and down. So did a disciple, Jesus told him about how the angels will be ascending and descending in ministry to humankind. In this message of the vision the dream that Jacob had is relevant. It is for you and it is for me this very morning when we want to be encouraged precisely because God is at the top of the ladder, you and I at the bottom, and God is saying there is this communi communication, constant communication between heaven and earth. And yes, we have in the past we are in the present, and this is not the last one of moments of crisis, moments when we really turn to the Lord and say, Lord, we don't know all the details. We want to focus on this place where you are. Because between where you are and here on earth, there are angels ascending and descending, and they are ministering to those who want to know what is happening. Is there hope? Is there a way out? Is there a final point, a final destiny for us to contemplate and meditate? And I want to come to now to the heart of our reflection, of our meditation this morning. And for that, I want to invite you to go with me to the book of Hebrews. We call it the book of faith. The story of those heroes of the faith. And friends, all these heroes had something in common. Okay? They saw the same place that Moses and Jacob saw. Turn, turn to uh, the book of Hebrew with me into the 11th chapter. Hebrews chapter 11. And 
beginning at verse 8. There it says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. Friends, this is good news. You and I have an inheritance. And the Lord is saying that Abraham, he sat down with the king of the universe, the lawyer of the universe, the one who is your defendant, and he's telling him, here is the paperwork, here is the promise, here is the guarantee of your inheritance. The place you are going to receive. You were called out of Ur, there in Chaldea, and you were asked to leave the place where you were at to go to a land that you would receive as an inheritance. Abraham, Abraham went, he left, and he walked, and he lived, and he pitched his tents wherever he went. And wherever he stopped, he built an altar. People could know Abraham was there because of those altars. That were the points, those were the marking points that reveal that Abraham worshipped, but he lifted up his face because he was looking somewhere else. He was looking to the sky. He was looking into the heavens, like Moses described in Deuteronomy chapter 10, like Jacob now, right there where he was on his journey to Haram, he is now on a dream watching. God is giving him in HD a clear vision of the place where he was going to go. God stood at, the, stood at the top of it and angels were coming up and down ministering to those who wanted to have something better. And here's Abraham. Now, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. And friends, just to be more specific, in verse 10 of Hebrews 11, it says, For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Friends, in the midst of a pandemic, I can't think of a better place to focus my eyes and my vision and by faith start living in that place the way Abraham did. How do we know that? Well, the book of Hebrew continues to make it even more clear as we are all familiar and well versed on it. Yes, he was looking to a city whose builder, he went to a land he was promised to receive and inherit, but that's not, that was not the end of it. That was a symbol of the real deal, the city that God himself built. And that was going to be the final place. And talking about that, verse 13, these all, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the heroes of the faith, starting with Abel, like it's mentioned here in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. It starts with there, Abel, and mentions different names until it reaches to Abraham. And it speaks of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. They all were looking for it. And it says, these all died in faith. In faith, they were looking at it. They died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen it. And this is what I want to emphasize with you this morning, dear friends. They were looking at it. And I want to invite you to look at it with me, or I will join you looking at it, that city. Jacob saw it on a dream. So did Abraham. So did Isaac. So did Moses. So did Abel. Everyone in the past did, and you and all today all 600 strong men and women, prayer warriors, believers, disciples of Jesus can see it by faith like they did. And it is not just a matter of seeing it by faith. 
It causes something when you look at it. It encourages you. You realize my citizenship, my passport, my U.S. passport is about to expire in the month of June. And if I'm going to go anywhere, I have to renew it. But that passport has a date of expiration. The citizenship that you and I have, it doesn't expire. It's for eternity. And this is the beauty of it. When you look at it, when you contemplate it, when you and I, by faith, focus on it, everything that is happening around us, not only in our state, in our nation, around the world, just loses all its value, all its worries, all of its concerns. Yes, there are beautiful places here on earth, but they don't even come by close to this city, to this place, the heavens of the heavens, where God is standing there at the top of the ladder, and he invites you and me by faith to look at it, to contemplate it. Not only look at it, it says, but having seen them, seen the city afar off, they were assured of them. Not only did they see it, the next part of the verse says, they embraced them. Friends, embrace the city, embrace the top of the ladder. Climb it by faith, walk there, go up and down with the angels. Actually, I counsel you more to just go up, don't come back down. Just by faith, keep climbing Jacob's ladder. Remember the song? You just keep climbing Jacob's ladder by faith because in the top of it, there is Jesus himself, God the Father, the Holy Spirit. They are empowering, encouraging you and I to go there. And friends, I want to close this morning, not only challenge you to see it, but to embrace it because verse 14 says, for those who say such things, declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Oh, aren't we all seeking that homeland? I can't wait. This is so exciting to just hear about it, but we are called, we are challenged, we're invited to look at it, to embrace it. This is so significant. For those who say such things, declare plainly that they seek a homeland your homeland, where our citizenship is, and truly, verse 15, if they had called, and truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. They had the chance to say, I'm going back. There was a tendency in the people of Israel, we're going back to Egypt. They even said, Moses, at a certain point, you're not leading us anymore. We had a church board here and we decided we're going back to Egypt. You can stay here if you want in the border of the promised land. We're going back. But no, these men before them, they live, they walk, they saw it, they embraced it, and they died looking at it because they knew by faith they could live on it and that would give them a sense of purpose. They had a dream. They were looking, marching, walking to that city, and that gave them a sense not only of purpose, that encouraged them every step of the journey because they knew the day would come when they would receive the promise of it. And then verse 16, but now they desired a better place than the place where they came from. Yes, but now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country where that city is. Friends, I'm encouraged. And I know you are as well by the power of the Word of God to see, embrace, walk, climb the ladder to that city of which Revelation 21 gives us a more graphic look at it and uh, and there's more to it, but I need to close. And friends, Revelation 21, and I saw, John saw it too. John the Revelator, he saw it too. Now I saw a new heaven. Yes, and a new earth. For the first heaven 
the one we're all we're all in. Yeah, that first, um, the one where they were at, they it just passed. It wasn't there anymore. Yeah, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven, the first atmosphere here where we are, and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the one that Abraham saw. Yes, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And friends, you know the description. You have been reading about that. You've been dreaming about it. And today, as an encouragement to all of us, I challenge you. Turn into, switch into channel 66. Those are the 66 books of the Word of God. Look at it. Contemplate it. Make it yours. Embrace it. Walk by it, but don't do this alone. Call your family. Call your neighbors. Call your community. This is why you and I are here for. This is the reason we exist as people of God. To call men and women, boys and girls, we're marching to Zion. That is our destiny. Coronavirus is not your destiny. It is not my destiny. It might touch any one of us. It doesn't matter. Our citizenship, our goal is at the top of that ladder. Let's climb it. Jesus is there calling, inviting, and giving us the directions there. Put your GPS toward that city in heaven. Where God is inviting all of us to contemplate by faith, embrace it, and prepare to delight to live there for eternity. What a way for God to tell us to get us excited about that great reunion day. Till then, may the Lord keep you strong. May the Lord bless you and inspire you through his word to make it yours. Let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you do to us when we are exposed to the holy ground of your word. Today, as we had had the privilege to sit at the feet of Jesus and just listen to your word, hear from him about the city, where him as the king is calling, inviting, but not just me, not just us here, 619. There's a whole bunch more that are watching all around Wisconsin, all around the globe, and saying, oh yes, we want to march toward that city, the new Jerusalem. We're all marching to Zion, and that in itself causes such inspiration, encouragement, that then all that is happening around us, most of the time, it is about bad news. There, here and there, some good news. But if it wasn't just for the good news of the gospel that makes it possible for all citizens of the heavenly Jerusalem, there are people who do not know about it. And God is counting on you and me to tell them all about it. Lord, thank you. For blessing us with such message not only of hope but of a reality that is there for all of us that we can embrace we pray and ask that you will bless us with these mercies as we ask them in the name of the king jesus our lord our friend and our savior amen god bless you dear church dear friends Dear community, how wonderful as it has it been to spend this moment with you. May the Lord bless you and keep up the good work of sharing about that city. Keep climbing that ladder. God is with you today and until the day we see him face to face. God bless. Goodbye.